So this lecture is part of an online algebraic geometry course on schemes and will be about blowing up schemes. So I mean, slightly inspired by a video that Arnold Schwarzenegger made on blowing things up. So this is uh, my version of this. So we recall how to blow up um, a point of um, a squared Um, <clears throat> what we do is we take a squared, which has coordinates x, y, and if we want to blow up the point 0, 0, what we do is we take a squared times p1. Um, so this would be points of the form x, y times um, a colon b. And we just take the subset of points such that x times b equals y a. Um, and uh, you remember this maps onto a squared and the inverse image of any point of a squared other than the origin is just a point, but the inverse of the origin is an entire copy of p1. So it's blown up the point zero of a squared into an entire copy of the projective line. On the other hand, we also have this construction um, proj of s, where s is um, a graded sheaf of quasi-coherent algebras over a scheme. Um, and the point is that blowing up a point or a subvariety is actually a special case of this. What we do is we take i to be a sheaf of ideals on x, um, and you remember a sheaf of ideals on X is essentially the same as saying a closed subscheme. Um, and we blow up along the sheaf of ideals by um, forming a graded algebra as follows. We just take Sn to be the nth power of I. So in particular, S naught is I to the naught, which is just the sheaf of regular functions on X. And then proj of S is called the blow up of X along uh, the ideal I or along the closed subscheme. Um, so we should just check that this construction really is the same as our original blow up construction. We, we'll just check it for this example. So here, um, <clears throat> Uh, the coordinate ring of a squared is just k x y, where k is the field we're working over. Um, and the sheaf of ideals, which is in this case is just the same as an ideal since we're working over an affine scheme. So the ideal is just the ideal generated by x and y. This isn't the point x, y, it's the ideal generated by x and y. I'm sorry, the notation is a bit ambiguous. Um, so let's say this is an ideal, not a point. Um, and um, if we call this i, we want to know what, what is the ring sum over i to the n. So this is an algebra over the ring R, which is k, x, y. Um, and this is easy enough to work out, but the notation is a little bit confusing because we have x sort of appearing as an element of R and also as a generator of this ideal. So what we do is we map, choose some new variables, a and b, and we map R, a, b onto um, onto the sum of i to the n. Um, and we're going to map this onto by mapping a onto x and b onto y. So, so we're dealing with the problem of having two copies of x and two copies of y by labeling one of the copies of x as a, if you see what I mean. So, so you notice this ring here is really k, x, y, a, b. So it's kind of very confusing with having two different copies of x. Anyway, um, uh, we notice that b times x is equal to a times y because x times y is equal to y times x in this ideal. And from this, we can see that this 
Um, this graded ring is really R A B modulo the ideal generated by B X minus A Y. So this gives us the description of this um, sheaf of quasi-coherent modules, although they're, they're really just ideals or modules. Um, so, um, so we can now work out what proj of sum of i to the n is because we've got this explicit description of it. And you can see it's just the subset of k squared times um, p1, where k squared has coordinates x and y, and p1 has coordinates a colon b, of elements such that bx equals a y. And this is just the same as the, our previous description of this blow up. So blowing up along a quasi-coherent sheaf of ideals really is the same as the old version of blow ups we had um, back in chapter one. Um, now, uh, what blow up does, um, so blow up, blowing up along um, a sheaf I has the following effect. It makes I um, invertible or locally principal. And I want to explain what this does. So what happens is we've got a we've got a, a scheme X and we've got a blow up of X along I. And over X, we've got a sheaf of ideals. And when you move the sheaf of ideals to the blow up, it becomes invertible or locally principal. And we now run into a rather confusing technical problem, which is how do we um, move i to x twiddle. So we've got a sheaf on x and we want to move it to a sheaf on x twiddle and, it, and it's this new sheaf that is going to be um, locally principal. Well, earlier on in this course, we had two ways of moving a sheaf from a space x to another space that mapped to it. We could either take f to the minus one of i or we could take f star of i, which was related to f to the minus one of i, because we take f to the minus one of i, and then we tensor over f to the minus one of o x of o y o, o x twiddle. Because the problem is this is not a module on x twiddle. And in order to make it into a module on x twiddle, we have to tensor it with the ring of regular functions on x twiddle. So we obviously aren't going to use this as the pullback of i, so maybe we use this. Um, so do we use this? And the answer is no. That's actually not what we mean by moving i back to x. There's actually a third way of moving the sheaf of ideals i to x twiddle. And if you're thinking to yourself that there are far too many ways of moving sheaves from one space to another, I will not disagree with you. So um, the third way is denoted by Hartshorn as f to the minus one i dot o of x twiddle. And let me explain what the difference between these two is. Um, so, well, Let's look at the affine case to, to see what's going on. So instead of having a map from x twiddle to x, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a map from A to B. So, so here I'm going to take these rings and M is going to be an A module. And I want to know how to make M into a B module. And there are two um, there are two things you can do. You can just take the module M. So this corresponds to the operation F to the minus one. And that's no good because this is not a B module. Um, so what we can do is we can take M tensor over A with B. And this corresponds to the operation F star on sheaves. And this is a B module. So what's the third way of moving a module M to B? Well, well, it doesn't work for all modules. What we do is we take I to be an ideal of A, and then we can look at the image of I, 
which is going to be um, um, a subset of B. And in general, it won't be a B module. There's no particular reason why it should be. So what we do is we take B times the image of I. And this is now, this is now an ideal of B. And it's the ideal of B generated by the image of I. And this is the one that corresponds on the level of sheaves to what Hartshorn calls the image I dot um, B. Um, and what I want to do now is to discuss the relation between um, this module, except I, I, I guess we, we would take M to be I, so I tensor over A of B, and, and uh, this one. And they are related because there is certainly a map from I tensor over A B to I to the image of I times B by the universal property of the tensor product. But, uh, and this is certainly on to, but it need not be injective. In fact, it's quite common for it not to be injective. It, it's not injective in, in some of the simplest possible cases. For instance, we can take B to be a field K, and we can take A to be the ring of polynomials over K, and we map A to B just by mapping X to zero. So it's, uh, the, the, this, this corresponds on the level of schemes to mapping spectrum of B, which is a point, to the spectrum of A, which is just a line. So we're just mapping the origin into, into the affine line. I mean, it's, it's about the simplest possible non-trivial morphism of, of schemes you could possibly have. It's not pathological or anything. And now if we work out both sides, um, let's take the ideal I, um, just to be the kernel of this map. So I is going to be the ideal X. And then the image of I, is just zero in B. So B times the image of I is, is the zero ideal. Um, however, if we take I tensored over A with B, well, I is just isomorphic to a one-dimensional free module over, over A. So this is just isomorphic to B, um, which is certainly not zero. So, so here we have a, a perfectly simple and natural example where, where these two are not the same. And for the purposes of showing that blowing up um, make all ideals invertible, it's this operation on ideals that is the one we want to use and not this one. Um, actually, you see at the level of rings, this is the natural way to, to turn an ideal of A into an ideal of B. You, you, you just take its image in B and turn it into ideal. And taking tensor products is a rather odd thing to do if you're just doing ring theory. But anyway. Um, so anyway, um, now that we've got that out of the way, um, the rest of the proof is kind of easy, especially because Hartshorn has already written it out, so I'm not really going to bother. Um, what we do is to, is to show that um, if we've got an ideal here and we blow up according to this ideal, then the um, inverse image, well, it's not the inverse image, it's this thing here, is now invertible. And the reason for this is that the blow up has... Um, an invertible module, sorry, an invertible sheaf O of one, as, as any blow up does. And secondly, this um, sheaf O of one happens to be isomorphic to F to the minus one I times O of X twiddles. And this is, this is a fairly easy piece of bookkeeping. I just sort of sketch it. So this sheaf here corresponds to the following graded module. You take the sum of I to the n, and then you shift the degrees by one. So you remember O of one is, a, is, a, is an invertible module where you take the graded module you first thought of and just shift the grading. Um, on the other hand, um, well, this is equal to I times sum over n I to the n, and the I corresponds to this bit here, and 
Um, this graded ring of algebra is just the graded ring of algebra that you use to form this. So if you if you unravel all the definitions, you find that this um, this sort of strange pullback of this invertible sheaf really is just the canonical invertible sheaf on the blow up. Um, so um, I'll just briefly mention another application of blow ups, which is resolution of singularities. So Hiranaka proved that you could resolve um, singularities of um, varieties and characteristic zero by repeatedly blowing up along um, various sheaths of ideals. And um, his proof was you know, 200 pages long and um, uh, fortunately it's been simplified so it's you can now actually prove resolution of singularities in only about 20 or 30 pages these days but um, anyway um, um, one of the frustrating things about resolution of singularities is there's there's a theorem that Hartshorn proves that um, you can obtain any projective map by blowing up along a single sheaf of ideals at least any map of a certain sort. Um, so in order to resolve singularities of a variety, all you have to do is to think of the right sheaf of ideals, and then you could resolve the singularities in one step. No one has ever managed to figure out what a, an easy way to define the correct sheaf of ideals. So this, this is a sort of open problem that people have been working on for decades, try and find a, 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 an easier way of resolving singularities. Um, anyway, the final application of blobs I want to mention is eliminating um, the um, points of indeterminacy of rational maps. And for this example, we're going to use the map from P2 to P1, which I seem to be using over and over again. This is the map that takes X colon Y colon Z to x colon y. And it's not really a morphism from P2 to P1, so let's cross it out, because it's not defined at the point zero, zero. It's not defined at the point zero, zero, one, because then x, y just becomes zero, zero, which isn't well defined. So this is only defined on P squared minus a point, and we say it's got a point of indeterminacy at zero, zero, one. And you can turn it into a rational map by blowing up P squared at this point. So we get the map here. Sorry, map goes in that direction, not that direction. So here we have the blow up of P2. And the blow up of P2 does indeed map to P1. And the blow up of P2 is just defined to be the subset. It's not defined to be. It is the subset of P squared times P1, consisting of all points X colon Y colon Z and A colon B, such that X B equals Y A. You should know this by now, as this is about the fifth time we've had this example. So by blowing up a suitable point, you can sort of turn this, um, th this map that isn't defined anywhere into a map from this bigger space that is defined everywhere. So that's what is meant by eliminating points of indeterminacy. And you see what we're doing here is we're blowing up along the sheaf of ideals of the closed subscheme consisting of the point zero, zero, one. You remember closed subschemes such as, uh, I'm being a bit sloppy here, calling this point a closed subscheme, but it's fairly obvious what's meant. So you blow up along this closed, reduced closed subscheme in order to resolve the indeterminacy of this rational map. So that's the simplest non-trivial example. And I'll just finish by sketching very quickly how you use the proj construction to do this in general. So now let's look at a general case. Suppose we've got a map from a scheme X to some projective space, and suppose it's not defined everywhere. Well, 
Um, suppose it's given as follows. Suppose we've got a line bundle on X or invertible sheaf. And suppose we've got some sections, S0 up to Sn. And you remember taking some sections of an invertible sheaf on X defines a map from an open subset U of X um, to P to the N. So this isn't really a map from X to P to the N. It's really just a map from an open subset U of X to P to the N. And what we want to do is to replace this by a bigger space X triddles mapping to X such that this bigger space does map to P to the N. And we're going to obtain X by blowing up something. So X triddle is going to be the blow up of X along. Well, we've got to think of something to blow it up along. So what can we do? Well, we do this. So the sections S naught up to Sn generate a subsheaf. Let's call it J of L. So if they generate the whole of L, then this map would be defined everywhere. So the problem is that the subsheaf J may not be the whole of L. And if it was, we wouldn't have to do anything. So we've got a subsheaf J of L. And now we can twiddle both of them by L to the minus 1. So J tensor L to minus 1 is now a subsheaf of, o, of, of the ring of um, so it's now a subsheaf of the sheaf of regular functions because L tends to L to minus one is just the sheaf of regular functions. So this is an ideal, or rather it's a sheaf of ideals. And now all we do is we blow up along the sheaf of ideals. So you can think of this as roughly speaking, it's making J into a principal um, so not principal, it's making J into an invertible sheaf, which is now generated by the sections S0 up to Sn. And since we've now got an invertible sheaf generated by sections, this actually defines a map from X twiddle, from the blow up X twiddle to P to the N. So we can use blow ups to do um, um, half a dozen different interesting things. Okay, well, that's enough about blow ups. Um, next lecture, we're um, moving on to study uh, the, the sheaf of, um, different, of differentials on a, on a scheme, which is a sort of analog of the one forms of a, um, a smooth manifold. <laughs>